Hello everyone and welcome to the Digimon Ghost Game video. This time I'm going to be going over today's episode and my thoughts, which is episode 15, The Mystic's Lair. So this episode we learn about a fortune teller called Mephisto, who appears in a tent very randomly and seems to appear and disappear around the area. Ruri's friend Mika asks Ruri to find this fortune teller as she wants to get her fortune read, and meanwhile Jellymon is on one of her fetch quest jobs and finds a human that's turned into a statue. Ruri finds the fortune teller's tent but realises it's the work of a Digimon, because of course it is, and this Digimon is Felesmon with some Boogiemon. Ruri hesitates going to the digital space because she's got her friends there and her friends are rather scared of Digimon. So she doesn't really want to just disappear and have to reveal that she has a Digimon. She doesn't want them to hate Angoramon. And jumping ahead a bit, at the end of the episode, her friend's kind of like, oh, okay, there's something going on along there, but we'll we'll let her have her time until she's ready to speak to us. But anyway, so she ends up going to the digital space and we finally have Angoramon evolving for the first time, which is evolving to Simbara Angoramon. Then the rest of the team show up and also evolve to their adult forms, so Battle Gammon and Tesla Jellymon, and they fight Felesmon, who kind of just decides it's time to end the fight, turns the humans that he turned to statues back to humans, and then leaves. He says that his, his goal wasn't to win the battle. So we don't know what his goal is, but it was just kind of to be there. And he's like, this, this is my compensation for not having your fortunes read. All the humans that I turn to statues are going to humans, and I'm not really sure why he's doing that. I'm hoping that uh, he's a recurring character and we get a little bit of depth into why he just sort of left when he could have very much won, because he's a perfect level and he's fighting three adult-level Digimon, so he didn't seem to struggle at all. So he probably could have continued to fight and it's a little bit like how we had Chromon in the Birdmon episode, which was just called Birds, and how Chromon was another perfect level Digimon who just sort of left for no reason, just kind of flew off for, yeah, not much reason. In any case, it is nice to see Felizmon. Of course, this is another fairly old Digimon design. This is another one from 2002. And while he has appeared in an animation before, which is Cross Wars, it is still nice to see these older Digimon designs pop up with these new Digimon designs. So we've got like Simbar Angoramon, who is a new Digimon, and we've got Velazmon, who is a Digimon that's been around in the franchise for about 20 years. So that's super nice. However, this episode, it kind of, while we do have lots of growth for the relationship between Ruri and Angoramon throughout the series, we've had them having communication issues, we've had them interact, we've, we've sort of know a bit about them. This episode didn't really have them interact at all, and it didn't really show any signs of growth that would have led to an evolution, which is kind of a little bit anticlimactic because we kind of had Angoramon be vague about not being able to evolve or something along those lines, and this episode just had him able to evolve suddenly with little to like no interaction with Ruri in this episode his job was kind of just to fly around and point out where the Mephisto tent was so he didn't really even talk that much he was just kind of there and then said oh I feel your I feel power flowing through me and it was very kind of suddenly got to evolve so if you haven't seen any of the other episodes you would have kind of thought they have no interaction and he just kind of was able to evolve which is moderately adventure colon of them, which is not good. So the evolution just kind of happened. And of course this episode kind of is hurt by a fact that I kind of bring up every few episodes, and this is something that's just reoccurring in the series, and that is the fact that it's kind of hurt by the fact that each episode is only 20 minutes in length. So we have the investigation, which is the first chunk of the episode, and then it goes into the battle for the last few minutes, and then they have to wrap up the battle in a matter of minutes. And because we had an evolution, that also takes up a little bit of time. So again, this episode could have felt a little bit better if it was a tiny bit longer, just to have a little bit more interaction between Ruri and Angoramon, and then more of a fight. I felt like the fight was very quickly over. I don't know why Felizmon just decided to leave. Maybe we'll revisit that. Maybe he'll come back and he's like, oh, this was my plan all along or something. 
But at the moment, he felt like he did just kind of leave. So on one hand, it's nice that we got another case of a bad, evil Digimon, and it's not in the same way that Dracomon was just pulling pranks. This is an evil, evil Digimon who wanted to harm people and also collect them for his own personal gain. And that's, that is nice. It is nice having an evil Digimon. We didn't just talk him down and say, hey, stop being evil. We didn't just have him going, oh, okay, I'll stop being evil. But still, the fact that he left just makes the episode feel a little bit empty. But otherwise, I like this episode. I'm glad we got an evolution. The animation was just beautiful. They had a lovely use of colours. I feel like the animation quality keeps on going up and up and up each week, which is pretty good. But... The fact that the episode is still hurt by the fact it's a 20 minute episode makes the whole back half of each episode feel slightly rushed. And I would have liked a little bit more interaction between Angoramon and Ruri in this episode. It felt just anticlimactic. Yes, we finally got to see Simba and Angoramon and what a cool looking Digimon. And it was very cool to see the three adult levels finally being able to fight together. That was really cool. But again, I would have liked more characters in this episode. I didn't really feel like there was too much character. But that's fine. It still had a spooky atmosphere, which I'm a big fan of from Ghost Game. And I'm still a big fan of this show so far. But again, it's so hurt by the fact it's a 20-minute episode. Each episode, well, most episodes at this point, feel like they could be a little bit longer. And that's something that I feel like is going to to continuously be an issue with this show that it just feels like the first chunk is so good it has a nice like investigation and then they meet the Digimon and then the battle happens and it just it's over so quickly but in any case I still really enjoyed this episode and I'm still really enjoying the series and those overall were my thoughts for episode 15 but of course eh, very shortly I'm about to record the podcast for this week so if you'd like to hear my thoughts along with others I'd definitely check that out because it's a little bit of a longer form. This These short, short reviews are only like maybe five to ten minutes. And of course, the podcast is closer to an hour in length. So if you'd like to hear more of my thoughts, definitely check that out. I will release it tomorrow. I have a release schedule on the website, which you can check out if you want to know when it's coming out. And of course, stay updated on Twitter. And of course, best way to know if we're releasing an episode is to subscribe and click that bell. But of course, like this video if you enjoyed it. And of course, let me know in the comments what your thoughts about episode 15 were. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye!